Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Asus ROG tournament right here in Helsinki. My name is Total Biscuits. And I am Dear Apollo. We've got an amazing lineup for you here. Absolutely fantastic. Well, what can you say? This is a tournament of winners. There's yep. so many fantastic players here in Helsinki. And this is going to be an extraordinary two days of tournament action here in StarCraft 2. Cannot wait for it. Yeah, absolutely. Best of five format, which the players love, the viewers love. Absolutely fantastic. It's going to be a single elimination tournament. Eight world-class players on the bill for us. And of course, it's going to be a PvP's open us up between Elfie and Huck. Yeah, $10,000 prize pool. Two yep. days, pretty good. And like you said, single elimination, best of five. That's something I really enjoy. I mean, you know, we've done DreamHack now and best yep. of three. It was a little bit unforgiving. Uh, and with the best of five format, I feel that it's going to give players a lot more room uh, they're going to have an extra kind of game, to be honest, to kind of try things, or if they make a mistake, they wouldn't be one game away from losing. So best of five is really good, but as you said, we are going into the first game very, very shortly, a PvP with Hug versus Elfie, but obviously we can't forget about the other players in this tournament, and oh, wow, no. there are some good players. Yeah, absolutely fantastic matchups coming up, and I'm particularly looking forward to the matchup that's going to actually be at the end of the day, which will be yeah. Rhett versus White Raw. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Huck versus Elfie, first yep. of all. Then we go into Demaga versus Select. That is going to be a fantastic matchup. Uh, Unbelievable rematch players. Rematch from BlizzCon. Yep. Uh, and then the third game of today will be Sho versus Idra. It's a pretty good, good game, too. And yep. then the final one, as you said, White War versus Rhett. Another great series. Yep. Lots of action today. Definitely, yep. So we got four best of fives for you today, and we'll be starting the round of four tomorrow, along with the bronze match in the finals. Then Sunday, we're going to have four community-chosen show matches mm. between various players. And I know a lot of people have been voting for Idra Hook if it doesn't happen in the brackets. <laughs> So uh, it, it should be happening on Sunday if it doesn't happen it's, then. Yeah, it's definitely happening. We're definitely going to see an Idra Huck, whether it be in the main tournament or the show matches. And those show matches are going to be so interesting. A thousand dollars for a best of five. Yeah. It's a lot I'm of money. I'm really looking forward to that. Honestly. I wish I was good enough to play in that. Yeah, you can join the club on that one. Yeah, unfortunately we're pretty bad. That's why we're sitting here instead of over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, th you know what they say, those who can do, those who can't cast. So that's what we're going to be doing. Whatever the case, this is going to be a good PvP and... We've got a lot of people on, say, the forums. We've been hearing a lot on the net about how this is an easy win for Hawk. I don't agree with that. I, I, I was going to say the same thing. You took the words right out of my mouth. This series, PvP in itself, can go either way. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a lot about the builds. Builds can have advantages over other builds. But Elfie is so good in PvP. Yeah. It's incredible. If you compare it to his other matchups, it, it plays to his strengths. Um, he's got like a 72 percent win rate against Protoss, and that is incredibly high. Ridiculously Usually high. Usually you see percentages around 60 percent for a good winning player, but 72 percent is really, really high. Uh, and as I said, the, the, it does really play to his strengths, even though you know, he's been criticized before for being very slow. But within PvP, you don't need to be fast. The, the matches, the average match length is not that long no, it's as not. well. Uh, and he's very, very good at decision making. One of the best. His control is up there as well. Yep. But on the other hand, it is Huck. This it guy Huck. has now done it all. He has been everywhere. He's won almost everything, apart from GSL, but I'm sure that's soon to come. Yeah, exactly. He's just got that one of the list of things. He's yeah. going to get around to it eventually <laughs> once he's got the time. It's on his fridge. Definitely, yeah. You can just see him ticking <laughs> off. He's got them stuck up there with some little magnets. With you know, He's got Huck spelled out in wonderful pastel colors. Soup. <laughs> Soup. Yep. Yeah. Pretty but yeah, badass. I mean, the, the, the one difference between these two players, they are very, very similar in style. The biggest difference really is experience. Yeah. And I think that Elfie has only just come into the spotlight. Yes. Uh, and especially definitely. because of IEM China, where he performs so well, like yeah. incredibly well. And especially in PvP as well, did so well there. And then he went into New York as well. But he hasn't really won anything apart from WCG Finland, which is in his obviously home country. Yeah. He hasn't really won anything. On the other hand, like, Huck has won everything. Yeah, so. Huck does keep uh, racking up the victories in places where a lot of yeah. people would traditionally say that it's not okay for a foreigner to win this tournament. That can't happen. But yeah. Huck says, no, we're just going to do that anyway. But yeah, we'll be getting onto this way very, very shortly. We have the map pool of today. Uh, is the same throughout, of course. And yep. uh, Zalnoga Caverns, Taldrum, Altar, two maps, two ladder map versions. Yep. Uh, then we also have the MLG Antigua Shipyard, which is cross positions only. Yeah. Uh, and then we go into the kind of more basic ones. We've got Metalopolis, Shakuris Plateau, 
um, Shattered Temple, uh, and then of course Terminus yeah. uh, SE as Pretty well. much a rogues gallery of the standard map choices, honestly, for yeah, any yeah. tournament that wants to put together something that's not too controversial. So it's a good mix of big macro maps and some smaller, more aggressive matchups. We're seeing Antigua Shipyard being something that's become quite accepted in the tournament scene now. I quite of, like it. It's yeah, good. it's not a bad map. It's actually the map we're going to be starting on for this particular series. So. It is, and uh, it looks like all the players are basically ready now, so I'm just going to double check that, and then we can get this underway. And it is going to be EG's Huck, yes. MLG two time champion, the first ever. What an incredible feat that is, versus the home favorite, Elfie. Elfie, absolutely. It's going to be good, and the countdown yep. is on its way, so we can get into this. Yeah, very I've got to notice my head's a little cold, so I might have to. Smooth, smooth. It's just how we roll. Smooth. Okay, folks, we're going to the first matchup right here, and as our host let us know, we're going to try and present it a little bit basic because we've got a lot of people here who've maybe never seen StarCraft II before. They're coming into the Digi Expo, and I think last year they had, what, 60,000 people through the Digi Expo, so it's a huge expo. I think it's one of the biggest technology expos in Europe. So we're going to keep this a little bit simple. Apollo's going to break down the analysis, and then I shall translate it for you. And here we go, folks. Hopefully you are ready for this, because I certainly am. The first matchup right here, the Asus ROG. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you from Team Evil Geniuses. Recently coming off his amazing MLG win, arguably the best foreign Protoss in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let me hear it for Huck! And his opponents, with quite a lot to prove, however, with some excellent recent performances and an amazing win ratio of over 70% in PvP. He's Finland's home favorite, the winner of WCG Finland. He's from Team Acer. Ladies and gentlemen, let me hear it for Elfie. Elfie is so incredibly unpredictable in this game. I mean, he plays this really aggressive style with a lot of fake four gates, which is, you know, one of the most aggressive builds there is in StarCraft II. Uh, and he also combines it with actually doing it. And there you can see the trademark APM down at six yeah. for Elfie. Yeah, pretty, pretty standard APM for Elfie right there. You actually notice that he is playing with his toes at the moment. It's quite <laughs> impressive. And uh, like I said, I mean, um, he is very slow. Uh, but in PvP, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's, PvP always comes down to decision making. Yeah to your control and also to the builds you use. And I'm sure both of these players are going to be using the best builds. You're, you're actually seeing two of the best control players, control-centric players here, Huck versus Elfie. So this is going to be, like I said, a clash of similar styles. Yeah, it's going to be the matchup which is decided simply by who executes what the best. It's really as simple as that. PvP, the first start for this tournament, it's a quite a rigid matchup. You've got a lot of very similar build orders. The way that the game plays out in the first few minutes is almost always the same. And of course, they're playing the same race here, so the same units are available. So really, it does come down to who uses their units the best and who makes, as you said, those ba best decisions because a single mistake in this matchup can decide the entire event. And uh, what we're going to be seeing from both of these players as they now start to kind of unravel their builds is Zealot Stalker. And as the Stalker pops out, that is when scouting is denied from any probe or you know anything that can come in. And that's when the deviation point comes in. Does he take a second guess? Does he foregate? Does he fake foregate? Does he expand? And you have a lot of options, which Elfie is very good at doing. He's very unpredictable and will throw in a lot. But I think we're going to kind of see this core around Robo play. And as we can see, Huck already taking the second guess, realizing that the probe is not actually in there right now. Uh, and so he's, well, don't, guess don't have to wait for that stalker. Uh, and he will want to play a kind of safe Robo. Uh, and for the Robo, that is for the Observer and into Blink. It's the safest kind of build there is in PvP because it can counter everything that's possible out there. You know, DTs, you're going to have an Observer. Um, if Blink play, you've got Blink Stalkers of your own. Stargate, you've got Blink Stalkers. And the uh, Scout does go in there, as we can see, and gets that information, actually, of that second gas. Yeah, I like that decision there from Elfie, just to go in there a little bit later, able to sneak in there. He did see the Robo going down, and he's also aware of the timing right there. In the meantime, oh, what are we seeing from Elfie right here? That's two more gateways added on. Will we see another? Are we going to see a four-gate execution? Execution-based play, yes we are. Now, the four gateway play, very, very aggressive and something that it's quite hard to hold if properly executed. 
Yeah, this is actually going to be really tough for Huck. As you can see, he's only just now started his sentry. The sentry will provide a force field to hold off. But he went for one gate into robotics facility with a very early second gas, which means he doesn't really have anything. If he goes for an observer right now from this robotics facility, he's going to be in a lot of trouble, and Elfie has definitely got the advantage going in. Oh, that's a really good place for the pile on there as well. Elfie now pushing up the ramp to try and uh, push Huck away. Those two gateways not complete, so no reinforcements coming in for Huck as of yet. He's going to have to rely on some excellent control here. Elfie stalk army taking some damage, a little bit of a poke there from the probe from the side. And Huck looking to surround. He gets the surround of the stalker right there. Nails it down the hook stalker stays alive really nice control right here by huck trying to uh, drag that zealot all the way across the uh, base and get it out of the way and there we go warp gates coming in huck with an immortal out on the field as well oh, however lp oh no it's trapped in right there by those zealots trying to back away as quickly as it can the shields on the immortal are currently down and that's one zealot taken out how much damage has elfie currently done there's a warp and the zealots to try and clean that up oh he's lost so many probes right now the immortal is going to go down very very shortly it is trapped by these zealots and all of a sudden, Elfie is in great position. He's doing a lot of damage. Oh, Elfie managed to take the Immortal out there. Very, very nice play by Elfie. Just as the Immortal tried to back off, Huck with an additional warp in of Zealots right now. But Elfie also bringing in a Stalker. And honestly, the probe count is quite equal at the moment. But repeated pressure from Elfie could cause a lot of problems. There was a nice cancel of the warp in. Huck able to take up the pylon and eliminate that at the top of the ramp. And now Elfie relying purely on this one right here. And Elfie is getting driven out of the base. Hawk looks like he's going to throw this back. Yeah, and Elfie's control we talked about being one of his strengths. It wasn't quite there this game. I think he may have got a little bit nervous, but he is chrono boosting back into probes. He's taking a second gas, and basically the four gate rush has ended now. Hug did manage to survive, uh, which is extremely important as he keeps his sentry alive also, but now he has a tech advantage. He has the robotics facility already out, and now he can decide, oh, he doesn't want to lose that probe, actually. Ugh, it does lose a probe, but the probe can right now. Hug has lost seven probes, and it's 25 probes, 219. Elfie does have a probe advantage, but like I said, Huck does have the tech. He's going to be able to go straight for Blink Stalkers now and put pressure directly back on. Yeah, and this is the problem when you've got Blink Stalkers versus an opponent that simply does not have Blink Stalkers. When it comes down to how good is your micro, well, Huck's micro is absolutely fantastic. It can make a Stalker be worth double if you are able to control it properly. So we're going to see how effective that's going to be. Elfie with no sign of a robotics as of yet, just warping in defensive sentries and actually trying to grab an expansion now and capitalize on this economic advantage here. But Hook's going to follow that one up with an expansion of his own. I really did enjoy Huck's Sim City within his base. The way he constructed his buildings really helped. He basically defended that with pure zealots simply because of the way the buildings were placed. The zealots were able to get surrounds correctly. Uh, and now we do have a more passive side of game. Both players now, now are taking their expansion. But as mentioned, Blink is on its way now for Huck. He's going to be able to harass a lot, especially if he gets an Observer out, uh, which is on the middle of the map already. He's going to be able to Blink up into the main base and start to harass over and over. And actually, Huck decides Ooh. to throw down the Dark Shrine. And uh, he's going to go into the base and see that the robotics facility is there. So I don't think these DTs are going to be able to really do that much in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Once the Observers come out, the DTs are effectively worthless. But it really depends on where Elfie decides to put that observer. For one thing, Hook's already got an observer of his own, so he's going to see what direction that goes in. If Elfie decides to go directly to the base and not build a second observer, there is a risk that Hook's DTs could get in there and do some serious damage before the next observer is on the mm. field to counter them. Yeah, I mean, Hook did decide to cancel Blink. Um, so he's cancelled Blink, and now he's researching Zealot Charge. So he's going to be going for a Zealot Charge Archon uh, kind of style. Maybe do some harassment with DTs, especially since a, a Protoss player will never really want to build two Observers. You kind of just want to build one because yeah. it's quite gas-intensive. Therefore, Elfie's Observer is going to be inside the base of Huck as Huck's DT Shrine finishes. Therefore, Huck is going to be able to build a lot of Dark Templars to go into the base of Elfie, and Elfie could be in a lot of trouble, and then combine that with Zealot Charge, with Archon's follow-up, Huck could be in a fantastic position. Yeah, he very well could be. In fact, Elfie actually does not have an Observer. He hasn't built one, and Huck is now uh, streaming across the map with a fairly large number of units. If he's able to get down a good pylon and is able to get a few Dark Templar into play, then things will get messy. However, Elfie is now constructing the observer. Here come two DTs right now. It's moving around those force fields. The observer is about to come out and Hook's DTs will be caught out of position. However, Elfie's going to need to get there pretty quickly. There you see he's going to split uh. those in two. 
He does get out with one, though. I mean, he realized that, oh, ah, that didn't work out so well. So no. one DT does go down, but he does survive with one, so he can basically turn that directly into an Archon. Yep. Uh, and Zealot Charge is about to finish now. And I'm looking around, even though Force Fields are great against Zealot Charge, Archons are going to be able to smash these Force Fields down and make them pretty much useless. But does Huck even have enough units? He has a 25 army supply versus 20. I'm not too sure he does have the big enough army. He definitely doesn't have enough gateways yet, as he's just about to finish two extra gateways. Uh, and I'm not sure attacking here would be the best option for Huck. Uh, and we'll have to see what he does decide to do. He's not taking the gases on the natural, so he may well just try to smash through. Yeah, it's certainly a possibility using the Archon as a buffer to try and absorb a lot of the fire, crash through there. And Elfie's force is not as large as I would like to see. And you pointed this out before, and it's very accurate that force fields aren't going to help all that much right here. Hook actually shoving a couple mm. of Archons towards this destructible debris to make sure he's got an additional angle of attack. And uh, it's a nice looking force here by Hook. A massive army supply advantage now, having warped in oh, a full yeah. round of units from six gateways. Look we'll at 41 to 30. This is going to be very, very dangerous. Hook now warping in even more zealots to add to this mix. And this is going to be tough to hold for Elfie. Yeah, and he's going to go in now, and the upgrades are nowhere near finishing, and there the oh. force field smash down. Yeah, absolutely. Archon's continuing to smash their way through there. Another force field placed down next to the cannon. I'm liking the positioning of that. A single Archon has been taken out. Elfie trying to focus fire on another. Down goes the cannon, and he's trapped outside of his own base, trying to escape. The force field goes down. Elfie's army getting crushed right now. Huck with enough firepower to easily eliminate everything that Elfie has in his natural expansion. GG, ladies and gentlemen. First game of this best of five series going to Evil Genius's Huck. Yeah, and Elfie had invested in gases there. I mean, he was upgrading blink and upgrades from the forge at the same time, and Huck hit as they were being researched. So you can technically say it was a waste of money in that scenario for him to get them, and Huck was able to use that money in his army and was able to push through there. Uh, and that was a really, really precise play and accurate play there from Huck. His control against defending against that four gate was incredible. Yeah. From that scenario, every time I'm in that, I lose. But Huck manages incredible. to he, he's killing stalkers with probes yeah which is incredible he's getting surrounds with pros picking off units which uh, you know in a regular pvp should not die there no no and it really shouldn't it really showed you know hugs experience is gonna really shine out here and a lot of people may you know think with a lack of experience for elfie is he going to crumble now under pressure? But if you do revert your mind back to iem china he was actually zero two down against Hazuobs is a great, fantastic Protoss player. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Elfie came back to win 3-2, winning three games in a row. So you can definitely not count him out yet. Oh, yeah. He, he's not going to crumble under the pressure, I don't think. Uh, that's a good, uh, solid idea as far as I'm concerned. I, he's, he has quite a lot of experience when it comes to lands. He's just not all that well known on the international scene. So we'll see how this one goes. One game currently up for Huck. And I have to wonder if this early pressure was ever really going to work against Huck. Because let's be honest, with all of that training in Korea, where that style is infinitely more prevalent, is Huck even beatable with early aggression? Can it be?